Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to see you, you know, finally once again, you know, um, on this morning. Uh, I just want to say, you know, thanks again, you know, for all those who jumped in, you know, to help do these online devotionals. You know, I know Jay did a lot. I know Christine did. You know, I know that there were others, you know, as you went to the book, you know, of, I believe it was Colossians. And so, you know, just really appreciate, you know, um, all of you who, you know, were just uh, jumping in and being a part of that. Just want to encourage you, you know, just to keep sharing this. Um, you know, as you know, I went to Israel, you know, for two weeks, you know, excited to be able to share over the coming year. It's not going to be like, a, hey, here's, uh, you know, what uh, took place, you know, in Israel kind of presentation. It's really going to be more and more, you know, you're going to kind of hear it, you know, come out in sermons, you know, and opportunities, you know, over the next, you know, um, couple years, most likely. But I can just tell you, very, very encouraging, very inspiring, um, uh, very challenging, you know, as it uh, pertained to some of the things that we did. It's, we called, uh, it's called walking the text and uh, went with Brad Gray, you know, who's just a great contextual, you know, leader and speaker. Uh, and he uh, just really deepened and encouraged our faith. What made this trip unique is that uh, you walk, hike three to eight miles a day uh, as you actually get to experience what you're learning. You know, I'll just give you one example. You know, we'd uh, walk for four miles in the middle of the desert for four hours, I should say, in the middle of a desert just to help us understand, you know, what the Israelites went through for 40 years. One thing to read about it, one through way to experience it for four hours that I wish was four minutes, you know, so just a, a really a deeper understanding understanding and experiential. He says we are experiential learners, and so I just really appreciated that. So we're going to begin a new book today. Uh, glad you're joining us. I want to encourage you to share. Like I said, we'll continue to do this as long as uh, we've got people, you know, jumping uh, in and, and joining us, you know, both live and later on. Uh, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians, so we're going to go through that book and so, um, uh, you know, I, I don't have time to go into all of it, but uh, the Apostle Paul, you know, you can read about it in Acts chapter 18. In Acts 18, now Paul leaves Athens and he heads to Corinth. Uh, and so, you know, um, um, I'm going to talk about Corinth in just a second. But one of the things that you need to understand is he set up a church, um, you know, uh, there, you know, in Corinth. And you can read about that. And I think it's the first 18 verses or so in Acts chapter 18. One of the instances that takes place is uh, as he's presented, you know, before the Roman, you know, leaders of the day, uh, they dismiss it because they're like, why is this a waste of our time? And the people, you know, go after a guy by the name of Sosthenes. S-O-S-T-H-E-N-E-S, Sosthenes, you know, who was the leader of the synagogue, you know, um, at the time, and they beat him up, you know, almost taking out their frustration on him since they can't take it out on Paul. Now, the reason I mention that is because we're starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. This letter is from Paul, you know, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and, you know, and from our brother Sosthenes. So could this be the very same person who is a leader of the synagogue? Could that person actually have come to faith? You know, and so that's kind of a cool kind of connection that you go back, you know, to Acts, you know, chapter, you know, 18. Now, Paul writes this letter, you know, uh, to those in Corinth, the church in Corinth, you know, from the city of Ephesus. You know, the, the reason he is writing this letter, this is important, is that he received from Chloe's household uh, about a disturbance, you know, in the church in Corinth, which we're going to talk more about tomorrow. It's in verse level, verse uh, 11. Paul also might have, you know, received a delegation from Corinth who brought to him questions from the congregation. And you can read about that. We'll talk about that in 1 Corinthians 7, 1. So the reason it's important is that this is not just a letter that's just to write, you know, to the to the church in Corinth, but it's a response to questions. That's critically important to understand because it makes a lot more sense when Paul is making some statements because he's not just making some statements just to make statements, but he's making it as response to the questions that the people had. So he writes, you know, this as response, you know, to those uh, re reports. Because of that, we probably know more, you know, about the Christians in Corinth than any other church in the New Testament because of 1 Corinthians as well as 2 Corinthians. Now, he calls himself, you know, a, an apostle of Jesus Christ. So what is an apostle? Well, we're going to look at that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul deals more fully with what makes a person an apostle. But just to, uh, to give you an idea, it's a Greek word, apostolos, which has the idea of a special ambassador. So Paul was a special ambassador of Jesus Christ to the world and to the church. 
And so we pick up in verse two. He says, I'm writing, you know, to God's church, you know, uh, in Corinth. So I'm writing to God's church in Corinth. To you have been called by God to be his holy people. He made you holy by means of Jesus Christ, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So let's back up just a little bit. He says, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth. See, church, you know, is a Greek word. It means ecclesia. It means the gathering of people. And so he wanted to distinguish, I'm not just writing to any group of people, any gathering of people, but to actually God's gathering, God's group of people that is gathering, you know, uh, as the church. Now, Corinth was one of the greatest cities in Paul's day, especially one of the greatest cities in the ancient world. You know, it's a community much like uh, you probably would find in Southern California. It was prosperous. It was busy. It was growing. It had uh, a deserved reputation uh, for the reckless pursuit of pleasure. Corinth, you know, had a rich ethnic mix, which is great. All different types of people from all over the world would go into and through Corinth. It was a center for sports. It was a center for government, for military, and for business. You know, um, Paul's Corinth, you know, if you were to think about it in this day, was uh, at once the New York, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas of the ancient world all combined. In fact, uh, there's a theologian who describes Corinth as intellectually alert, materially prosperous, but morally corrupt. Morally corrupt. And so, you know, he's writing to the church at Corinth, the church of God, something good, which is in Corinth, which is a challenging city to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And so the reason I mention all this is understanding the tension between the church and the city is important to understanding the letter of 1 Corinthians. Here's the bottom line. Is the church influencing the city or is the city influencing the church? Let me say that again. Is the church going to be influencing the city or is the city influencing the church? Is the church influencing culture or is culture influencing church? Does that sound a little familiar? That's the key is, are we standing out as salt and light and influencing the culture, reaching out to the culture, connecting to the culture, or are we just embracing what the culture has into our own lives? And so that's the contrast that's being made there. Now, he, he talks about God's holy people. Now, holy people means to be set apart, and we are set apart, we are holy because of what Christ Jesus did for all of us. You know, that's what he's saying there. And then he says, just as he did for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, we are holy, we are set apart based on what Jesus Christ did for us. Then it says in verse 3, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Now, grace and peace is a common greeting. You would see five times, you know, Paul mentions in his letters, grace and peace. And the reason that's important is because it's both from a Greek and a Jewish customs. Uh, a Greek custom would be grace, you know, upon you. Jewish is so shalom, but peace upon you. And so he combines those those two together, letting people know he's writing to both non-Jews as well as Jewish people. Now he also mentions, and this is already, I believe, the second, yeah, the second time in these first couple verses that he says the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul mentions 17 times in this letter alone, he refers to the Jesus as the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's important for us to remember what that title means. Lord is a title designating not only matter, a master and boss, it's also revealed in the Old Testament as Yahweh and Jehovah. Like this is my God, this is my master, this is the one that whom I'm serving. So it's not just my savior, but understand that he's mentioning the reason this is important, my Lord, is because there's a big difference between calling him savior, what he has done for us, making him Lord, what we're gonna do and place him in positions of honor of which he needs to be in our lives, which helps us to wade through the, the days and, and opportunities that culture brings our way. Uh, and so as we wrap up this time, you know, and this, this moment, you know, today, I just want to go through these first three verses, kind of give some general background because it's going to really unfold, you know, over the next several weeks as we go through first and second Corinthians together. My hope, you know, on this day is that we would start our day with Jesus at the center, 
that we would start our day recognizing, Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord, and we're going to walk through, you know, as we understand the confluence between culture and church, and how do we continue to make Jesus Lord and center of our lives, of our church, which is our gathering, as we continue to move forward. So uh, thank you so much, you know, for being here. Let me pray, and uh, we'll begin our day. Jesus, thank you so much for leading and guiding us. Lord, I just thank you for those who are watching right now as we kind of do this live together, that you would lead and guide us. Father, thank you for Paul's efforts to create churches and places where people are far from you. Father, may we not look down, you know, on culture as much as an opportunity to reach out to those who are far from you. May we have hearts for people who are lost. And may we have opportunities to share your faith and your light and your truth on this day. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a wonderful day as we begin this week together. And I look forward, um, you know, to being with you guys, you know, this weekend. But uh, I'll see you again, you know, uh, tomorrow morning. We'll jump in in verse four if you want to jump ahead. So 1 Corinthians 1, we'll jump in verse four and we'll go through five or six, you know, seven verses together. So I love you guys. It's great to be back. Uh, my brain is still kind of messed up. I'm about 10 hours ahead. I'm awake right now, you know, which is good. Many of you guys have come and uh, been a part of these devotionals where I've yawned. You know, a lot, I shouldn't be on him, you know, this uh, week because it is the middle of the afternoon, you know, for me until my body completely adjusts, you know, back to the time change. So, you know, thanks guys. Love you guys. And uh, I will see you guys all soon.